Throwing weapons are one of the hallmark features of Morrowind. One of the features that the developers seem to have forgotten about over the last 20 years, but that doesn't mean they aren't worth your time in the game that introduced them. So in today's video, we'll be teaching you everything you need to know about throwing weapon, the associated skills, and how to get some of the best items in this slot in the entire game. Let's get into it. So first things first, before we talk about the weapons themselves, we of course need to teach you how to use them. And we can start there by making sure that you can land all of your thrown hits. Because every time you throw a weapon, well, that is sweet, sweet money going out of your pocket. So you want to make sure that every single one of these hits, especially in the early game. Hey, fellas, look what I found in my pocket. Look, a year's salary right here. Now, in order to do that, we want to level our marksman skill as much as possible, as this is the skill that will be taken into account in our hit chance formula along with our agility. However, just like bows and arrows, although thrown weapons have their hit chance modified by our marksman skill and our agility attribute, well, their damage is actually controlled by the strength modifier. So if we want to deal a lot of damage with a throwing weapon, we want to make our strength as high as possible. So somewhere between your adventures and target practice, make sure you're leveling up some strength skills as well, because a lot of the base game thrown weapons in Morrowind do lack in the damage department, which is why we'll be using a plugin that we'll be talking about shortly to kind of close that gap. But before we get there, there is actually one more thing I wanna mention about throwing weapon damage, because looks are a little bit deceiving when it comes to throwing weapons. Let's look at our damage formula. You can see in here there is a slot for our bow damage and our arrow damage along with our other modifiers that we mentioned, things like strength, etc. Well, throwing weapons differ from this, our typical range damage formula, in one way, and that's because there is not a bow and an arrow that can be added together to then find our in damage number. Instead, whatever damage you see in your inventory when you hover over a thrown weapon, that is instead doubled, acting as both the bow and the arrow in this formula. So even though our star here may have a damage of one to four, in reality, it is actually two to eight. So although that is still a pretty dang low number, it is a little bit better than it first looks because whoo, if it, this wasn't the case, man, things would be <laughs> to say the least. Now, before we get into our build and talking about the throwing weapons themselves, a final thing that I would like to mention is, well, just a friendly reminder for damage in Morrowind, especially, again, since we're dealing with expendable items here, and that's that the damage range that you see on your throwing weapon, such as one to four here, that is actually not a dice roll chance, but instead the damage range of charging up your attack. So if I click my mouse one time, it's gonna be a one. If I hold and fully pull back my attack and then release, well, then it will be a four. And that is also not the only thing that charging your attack handles when you are using a thrown weapon. So if you look at the video here, you can see if I just click rapidly, the weapon I've thrown actually has a shorter range and dives farther down below the crosshair than the fully charged attack that you can see here. So if you want to be as accurate as possible and deal as much damage as possible, make sure you're fully pulling back before releasing every one of your darts, stars, or throwing knives so that you have the easiest adventure possible and are the deadliest warrior that you can be. Because if anybody saw that show in their childhood, well, you know, you wanna end up there. Now with the reminders out of the way, let's hop into the game, take a look at an example character build showcase our plugin that I've been alluding to so far, and finally end with an incredible bang, as is typical how-to video fashion. See you in Vardenfell. Ladies and gentlemen, our example build today begins with the selection of the name, because as I've always said in every how-to, 95% of the power comes from the name. I mean, your name kind of defines your destiny. I mean, just look at Elon Musk's kid, X Ash EA1758. I mean, the kid's gonna turn into a walking calculator. I mean, names do have power. And talking about power, our name today, because we're all about throwing weapons, and one of those in the game is a dart. Well, then we need to be Phil the Power Taylor, the greatest lad to ever leave the United Kingdom and one of the greatest arts players of all time. I mean, just look at that guy. What an absolute Chad. Wouldn't you just want to freaking grab a pint with old Philly boy over there? J just don't wager any any money on the darts. That, that's not going to end well. <laughs> now, for our race selection here, there are a couple different ways you can take it 
for throwing weapons. Now, if your primary focus is maxing that hit chance, well, then your best selection is going to be the Wood Elf as they get that plus 15 to Marksman there in the skill bonus. Again, the highest bonus that we can get from race selection is 15. They also start with an agility of 50. So they are going to be very, very effective, the most effective character at landing their hits from character creation. But like I mentioned before in the video, ag agility isn't the only thing that matters to a thrown weapons build. In fact, strength is just as important because that's what defines your damage. So if you wanna say, screw the hit chance, I'll train it myself later on, it is a very intriguing path to go either a red guard, an orc, or even a Nord for their high strength attributes, although the Red Guard is probably the most intriguing if you're planning to go this path because of the Adrenaline Rush ability that fortifies your agility and strength both for 50 points. And again, those are the two attributes that we care about most when doing our throwing weapons build. So if you wanna go damage and fireworks at the start here, I can recommend the Red Guard or you know something like a Nord or an Orc if you don't really care about landing those shots. And then if you just wanna be nimble, quick, evasive shinobi fighter go ahead and pick the wood elf now for creation of our custom class when we're thinking about a throwing weapons character the first thing we want to do is select our specialization as stealth because if we look at the items down here boosted by stealth well there is marksman to help with our hit chance as well as things like light armor sneak short blade things that are typically more of like a ninja focused play style and if you're going as a throwing weapons user well that's that's probably what you're trying to do so let's go ahead and take our specialization as stealth if only for the marksman gain that we do get now for our favorite attributes we can leave this first one as strength because again that is modifying our damage boosting up that strength not a problem for our second one let's go ahead and select agility keeping that hit chance nice and high because again every single one of those darts knives or stars that we throw that's money in the bank all right and we want to keep as much money to ourselves as possible and not you know throwing them into our enemies even if that's the only way that we're going to be killing them with this character now moving on to our major skills the only thing that we really need to do is leave marksman as a major skill. I'm kind of taking my own view of this with a more like a shinobi kind of ninja stealth build, but you can take a throwing weapons user and do it any way that you like. So as I mentioned, starting out with marksman as a major skill to get that early boost, help with our hit chance, moving down to short blade for those times when we run out of ammunition and have an enemy in our face, moving down to light armor again, sticking with that kind of ninja theme along with acrobatics and athletics to keep us nimble, moving around like the ranged character that we are. For minor skills, I took Spear as a way to help us level our agility, and again, another alternate weapon skill. Spear's awesome for our ranged characters because it does keep us at arm's length. Security, Illusion, Hand-to-Hand, -hand, and Sneak, and then again, all supporting that kind of ninja-esque shinobi play style, helping us to remain sneaky, light-footed, and keeping us out of reach of all those badass orcs and Dremora lords that we do not want up in our face and that we would much rather avoid and then, you know, sling a star from the darkness to take them down. Moving on to our births, sign here there really only is one incredible choice and this is pretty typical for any ranged character in Morrowind and that is going to be the lover mainly for its ability mooncalf which fortifies our agility by an additional 25 points again accuracy is so very important whenever you're doing a throwing weapon or ranged build because every single piece of hardware you throw at an enemy is cash and we want to keep as much of that for ourselves as possible and additionally the lover's kiss ability here paralyzed for 60 seconds great disengage from combat and a way to get out of a tight situation when you do run out of ammo so here we have our example character build for our throwing weapon focus character phil the power tailor a wood elf blood dartist born under the sign of the lover with a agility of 85 at the beginning speed of 50 marksman of 50 so we're going to be nice and light on our feet very very evasive and landing all of our hits and although our strength is only 40 here at the start the items that we'll be picking up from the plugin that we are going to be making our way to will certainly make up for that so now that we have our character build let's head to vivek and show you exactly what the area effect arrows plugin is all about ladies and gentlemen welcome to vivek this site of our area effect arrows plugin store that will take this playthrough from, you know, slightly infuriating if you're using only the base game, throwing weapons into absolutely broken and honestly meta shifting and somewhat game breaking. So thank you Bethesda for that one. Now, 
before we got here, of course, we did our normal census and excise limeware platter trickery, selling it all to a real at the trade house over there. And now our pockets are lined with a good bit of gold and our blood dartist is ready for a shopping spree. So let's head down to this lower section here of the foreign quarter. Uh, excuse me, guard, looking, looking good, buddy. But you will now notice a new store right here. And you can see that this is Ara Drain the Fletcher. So let's head inside and see what Todd has prepared for us. Now, first things first, when you enter, yes, that is a Daedric longbow. And yes, you can buy it here. Crazy, right? You're buying a Daedric item from a, a shopkeeper. Yeah, that's that's something you only do in the DLC, right? But believe me, the fun doesn't stop there because again, this is about throwing weapons. This is not about our bows and arrows. So let's talk to Aradrain, ignore that $50,000 bow and see what we have in store. So once we pull up the barter menu, you can see there is a horde of ammunition here for our character to use. Everything ranging from glass throwing knives to long bows, enchanted arrows. Ardrain really has everything that a ranged character needs. And the best part of this plugin is not only the items that it presents to us, but the fact that every single one of these items, at least the ammunition, not the weapons, fully restocks. So you can buy out all of these items, close the barter menu, open it back up, and they will all be back. This is incredibly rare in Morrowind. In fact, there are only really two main restocking merchants available early in the game for throwing weapons if you are playing without this plugin. And that is Sorolus Sackis in Ebonheart, who has a restocking supply of silver darts only, and Haladless Mod in Caldera, who has a restocking supply of steel darts and throwing knives only. So if you're not using the plugin, be sure to go and see them. They'll be able to hook you up with at least some restocking ammo. However, getting back to the plugin, there is a lot to take in here, as I mentioned, but I will direct your eye to a couple of my favorite items. The first of which is an absolute standout superstar you really, really want in your inventory. And that is the Viper Star. Attack two to five, but with a poison four to seven points for 10 seconds. So this is dishing out a ton of damage over time and only for six gold. This right here is the crux that will just absolutely blow this character into the stratosphere. This is such a strong weapon and as long as you're fighting people that don't have resistances to poison, it is a standout. All you have to do is hit them with a couple of these, stay nimble, stay quick, running around, you'll pretty much win any fight. So we'll be adding those to the inventory. If you want something unenchanted, there is of course the glass throwing star, value of 20 attack, two to nine. Although for the price, they are far overshadowed by any of our enchanted items here. So only go that route if if you just want to use glass throwing weapons for roleplay, <laughs> right? <laughs> they're, they're certainly not the best that our drain has to offer. Now, after the Viper Star is a must have for the inventory, I will hover up here and you will see our Dire Storm style of weapons. And what these are are massive area of effect elemental spells. So you can look here at the Dire Firestorm Dart with a fire damage 6 to 14 in 20 feet. Again, only for 8 value. That's absolutely ridiculous. Such a steal when you compare that to the glass throwing star. Our drain re really knows how to make a bargain. But another thing to note is the difference in price between the darts and the stars. So you can see here, this is the exact same effect. Fire damage, six to 14 points, 20 feet, but the star is 10 gold more expensive per item. So I would say, especially in the early game, whenever you're shopping, be sure to grab the darts because they're just so much of a greater deal. So I'm gonna grab some dire firestorm darts. These are gonna be great against undead. And then I will also grab the shock bloom darts here as that's pretty much the most versatile elemental damage type with really only Nords having a resistance to it. Now with those three stacks in our inventory, that's 62 items there, cost of 439 here at the beginning. Go ahead and buy that. And then I'm, like I mentioned, just gonna fill the rest of my inventory up with Viper Stars because like I said, they are an absolute standout. These things are just totally overpowered. And now we're pretty much set up 
to take on the world here. I have 50 Viper Stars, 21 Firestorm Darts, 21 Shock Bloom Darts. This alone should showcase the power of the Area Effect Arrows plugin. Again, you get a Daedric Longbow that you can buy, which is crazy. And then you have a totally restocking merchant for a lot of amazing throwing weapons with insane enchantments for an incredibly low price. When you compare this to what's offered in the base game, it really does make sense why Bethesda added this in because throwing weapons as a playstyle were honestly pretty weak with not a lot of options to restock your ammo. And this plugin really changes that and makes it completely optimal. Now, before we continue on our journey, we actually are going to want to do one last thing. And that is going to be head up to the top of the foreign quarters and visit the Mages Guild. And we are actually going to want to teleport our way back over to Balmora. Here we are with Fl Flacasia? Flacasia? I, I don't even know. Don't, don't get me started. But we are going to travel back to Balmora. And once we are in Balmora, we need to talk to Moraine Drin and grab the water breathing spell. Now, I do need 50 gold here. I mismanaged my money a little bit, but... That's not too hard to find, so let's maybe just uh, head up here. Join the Mages Guild. Yes, I would love to. Grab our Restore Magicka Potions. Our Fortify Willpower Potions. Actually, we'll just go ahead and take everything. Uh, head back downstairs. And with those items back in our inventory, we can actually just sell some of these Willpower Potions back to the Orc over here. Grab 68 gold, and then boom, there we have our water breathing spell and a inventory full of standard restore magic potion. So let's grab the water breathing, and then we can actually just head back to Vivek here. And once we are back in Vivek, we need to make our way down to the ground of the foreign quarter and out to the boat. So I'll catch up with you there. But now with our shopping spree complete, you know we have to end every how-to video with a bit of a display of power, right? We have to end with a bang. And to do that, I'm gonna go outside of the city here and rest until I get a Dark Brotherhood assassin to attack me because I wanna head to Tribunal at level one because Tribunal has the strongest throwing weapons in the game. And we're gonna go get them. So let's go ahead now that we are out of the city limits. Let's go rest. Actually, let me make sure my Viper stars are on. And spam rest. Oh, there we go, the second one. We got a rat too. But look how strong the Viper Stars are. Okay, one hit. One hit only. And dead. Look, one-shotted the freaking Dark Brotherhood Assassin at level one. When I'm telling you that these Viper Stars are way too overpowered for six gold, I, I seriously meant it. I mean, look at this. That case in point. That, ladies and gentlemen, is how we're going to go to Tribunal at level one. So now that we have opened up the Tribunal quest line and our passage over to Mornhold. We're gonna head to Ebonheart, and I'll catch you on the mainland. So here we are in Mornhold, City of Light, City of Magic. Let's go ahead and make our way over to the Great Bazaar, ignoring Gaynor over there, the freaking destroyer of worlds. I guess proof that boosting your luck into the stratosphere makes you pretty much unbeatable in this game. But what we're gonna wanna do is head to the Great Bazaar, take a left over here, because down in the sewers, we will be finding a quest that brings us to the greatest throwing weapon in the game. And what better time to get that than at the low level of one? I mean, that's that's how how two videos work, right? And ooh, hold on, our first tribunal enemy. Oh, come on, missed a couple shots. There we go. One more. Ugh, come on. Just land one hit. There we go. Okay. That was the most evasive ghost I think I've ever seen. That was ridiculous. As I was just applauding the Wood Elf just a minute ago for being so accurate. I am going to conserve my fatigue here and stop running because we are working with a finite amount of ammunition here. So let's move forward. Oh, we have a group here. So this is where our area of effect is going to be really nice. Look at that. Okay, there we go. The double hit. And look at that. Oh my god. It's like we're shooting freaking cannonballs. <laughs> that is insane. 
Oh my god, you should not be able to just buy this at level one. But here we are, once we come to this cross in the road here, we need to head down, continue our adventure. I am gonna rest again. All right, now that we have our health back, let's head in. Let's just keep it nice and slow. Nice and slow, because unlike using a melee weapon, every time I swing my fists, that's money out the door. Um, and because of that, I'm gonna ignore these rats. They, they are, they are not really worth my time. And we're getting close to our objective anyway, so let's keep walking, keep walking. And right up there, we will find our quest giver. You there! I've come for the darts. Beware the Black Dart Gang, adventurer. They've robbed me of everything I hold dear. Well, we're looking to rob them of everything they hold dear. So, let's see what she has to say. They ambushed my lover and me in the temple sewers. Veriner held them off while I ran. When I turned to look back, Veriner was down. I just kept running. Now Veriner's ghost comes to me at night, begging me to come to him, to rescue him. He says he has a message for me, but I can't go down there. I can't face the Black Dart Gang. Veriner was a great fighter, but with one dart, he was dead in seconds. They'd kill me for sure. And, ladies and gentlemen, most people will be dead in seconds from the Black Darts, which is why we're gonna go get them. So let's sign up for the quest. And we need to now go find Veriner's ghost. And Veriner's ghost is in the Temple Plaza sewers. And the only way to really get there is to head back out to where we were. So instead of sitting here and showing you us backtracking all of our footsteps, we're gonna cut to the sewer grate where we entered. Okay, here we are back in the Great Bazaar. And now what we wanna do is head to the temple and to do that, again, we just need to head back in that courtyard with Gaynor and ignore the sound of the bugs that are constantly grating in your ears at Mournhold. And then as I say that, they stop. That's hysterical. <laughs> There's that Morrowind magic that we all know and love. Oh, they're back again. Apparently, they're only there when you're, when you're looking. It's, you know, it's one of those things. But like I mentioned, we are here at the temple. Let's dive into the reception area. Take a left over here to the office of the Lord Arch Cannon. And then we want to follow this hallway all the way to the back of the house because we need to find a sewer grate in the basement that Almalexia has been hiding from us like her intentions with Sothasil. So we just enter the Hall of Ministry. We're keeping going. We're keeping going. Now we're turning left, just going as far down as we can. And there you have it the Mournhold Temple Basement. Let's hop in, and then in front of us, you will find another sewer grate. So this is the Mournhold Temple Sewers. Now, the first thing we need to do is find Veriner's ghost. And to do that, we need to ignore these rats if they will let us. Okay, there we go. Thankfully, we are quick enough as a little night nimble wood elf to outrun them. The ghost is a little bit more of a problem. Oh, come on, come on. Ooh, staggered. That's not good. That's not good. Can I get through? Can I fit? Oh, they're blocking me. Ooh. <laughs> okay, this is going poorly. The stagger of the rats was too strong. And now that we're out of fatigue... Gotta fight for our lives here. One down. Oh, come on. Just one more. We have zero health. Oh. Oh, my God. We did it with our last shock dart. Okay, yeah, that'll do. Thankfully, that's a one and done. Okay, well, that didn't go as planned, but that's what happens when you do things at level one that you should not be doing. <laughs> like I said, let's keep going. We took a left over here, and we're making our way down this hallway, and Veriner will be over here to our right, and he is a ghost, so don't attack him, because you do need to talk to him if you want to complete the quest. So here we have Veriner's ghost, and stranger, listen, I have a message I must tell you. My name is Veriner. I was killed by the Black Dart King. I beg you, avenge my death. Their hideout is in Old Mournhold, Temple Sewers West. Oddly specific, Veriner. <laughs> Just 
talking and map names, but I digress. Many have died fighting them, but there is a mechanism that can flood the room, drowning the gang. Find a lever that looks like a torch holder near the east end of the chamber, but whatever you do, don't get too close or you will join me in the afterlife. And that is all Varener has to say. So we can leave now. All we need to do is make our way over to the spot that he mentioned with the Old Mournhold Temple Sewers West. So let's head up here. Keep walking. Keep walking, keep walking. And sure enough, here we have Old Mournhold Temple Sewers West. Now that we are in the West Sewers, I will show you where the Black Dart Gang is hiding. However, you will also be reminded very, very shortly why we grabbed that water breathing spell back at the start. Because as Veriner mentioned, there is a way to cheese this, actually. And all we need to do after we cheese it is collect our spoils. So let's at least show now where we will be going. And it is not that far away, just around the corner here. But let's pop a crouch so that they don't find us because they are incredibly strong. There they are, the first two members of the Black Dart Gang. And behind them, of course, is their sanctuary, hideout, whatever you want to call it. But like I mentioned, there is a way around this. Although you can certainly beat them at level one with fighting, you will conserve their ammo the most by simply drowning them because they won't be wasting the ammo throwing it at you, but you certainly can do it. I actually did this on stream not too long ago. You can catch that over on the second channel. So if you're in the mood for a very challenging fight at the start, go ahead and try your luck at fighting them. The Viper Stars will carry you through it, but if you're looking just to get the items and get on your way, well, that secret lever that Variner mentioned is right here. And all you have to do to get the most powerful throwing weapon in the game is click it and wait. Okay, so there you go. Water level's rising. As you can see, it's just flooded the entire map. So what we want to do, let's step outside. Let's rest twice. So let's just rest for 24 hours. Rest for another 24 hours. And once that's out of the way, let's try and get our spell on here. It may take a little while as we didn't take alteration at the beginning. You can also use a water breathing potion if you have one of those. Okay, there we go. Spell on. Now we just need to swim our way over to the Black Dark Gang and collect our spoils. And there we have our first Black Dark Gang member. Let's make sure our water breathing gets back on. Oh, come on. We're, <laughs> Ooh, we're running out of breath. Come on. Oh, okay. Just in time. But let's search them. And here you will find the best throwing weapons in the game, bar none. So let's look here. First, you have the Black Dart, a poison 10 point for 120 seconds dart. This is going to deal ridiculous damage over time. And it ticks for two minutes. So this can pretty much take down anyone that you want it to as long as you land the hit. So you maybe want to save these until you have a really, really high marksman skill, really, really high agility, because this is an incredibly valuable tool to have in your back pocket. Moving down, you have a bleeder dart, damage health, five points for 120 seconds, another ridiculous damage over time. Carmine Dart, damage fatigue, 20 points for 30 seconds, with a poison of 10 for 30 seconds. The Fine Black Dart, poison 10 points for 120 seconds, attack 1 to 10. Fine Bleeder Dart, attack 1 to 13, damage health, 5 for 120. Same with the Carmine Dart. And here you have some of the darts with just ridiculous attack. So here's the Fine Spring Dart with attack 55 to 110. And keep in mind, those numbers should actually be doubled. So it's really 110 to 220 attack. So this thing is like freaking throwing a nuclear warhead at someone. Like this is ridiculous. If, if it hits them, they're, they're gonna feel it, okay? And then finally, we have our normal spring darts attack 50 to 100, and then our steel darts, you know, nice and basic attack two to five. But as you can see here, the Black Dark Gang, they have some serious gear that, that you want. So take all of that, and then you can swim around to the other members again. Just make sure to keep refreshing your water breathing. There are actually two more down here. So let's 
grab the rest of the loot here. Let's find the last guy. We pretty much just want to keep spamming our water breathing. Because our alteration is trash. Oh, there is the last member. Come on now. Let's get that spell on. There we go. Loot the last guy. And now we can just simply make our way back. There is a little back passage over here that you can take. Although it is a little longer, so you're just going to want to keep spamming, <laughs> spamming that water breathing, drinking your potions, and going about your way. But ladies and gentlemen, there you have it. Freaking Tribunal Level 1 Black Dark Gang complete. And to turn this quest in, all you have to do is run back to the first lady that we spoke to. So instead of, again, showing you all the backtracking, we'll cut there now and show you the ring that you get at the end of this quest. Because you've already done it, may as well get all the rewards. All right, so here we are back after avenging Nerissa's husband. Let's see the item that she has given us. They're dead. You killed them. You killed the Black Dart Gang. It's a miracle. Please take this. Verner gave it to me. It belonged to his family. I'm sure they all would want you to have it. You have my thanks and the thanks of Verner's family and his spirit and all the victims of the Black Dart Gang. Verner's ring has been added to your inventory. So let's take a quick look here. Verner's ring, which is a charm, 1 to 50 points for 5 seconds on touch. So something that will work out nicely if you're ever trying to barter, you know, pop that on someone, get a little more disposition. Just a nice little additive to have. But there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Now you have all of the most powerful throwing weapons in the game at the low level of one. You have already shown to Tribunal that you are certainly ready for it. You've even accomplished a little bit of vigilante justice, so the people of Mornhold should be singing your praises by the time all this is over. So that's going to do it for me here, folks. Be sure to stop by the second channel or Twitch to catch me live and see more long-form content and playtests for builds like this in the flesh. I hope to see you there. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, I will catch you on the next one.